So, you want to launch a subscription box and don't know where to start? Girl, you are in the right place. I'm Julie Ball, a subscription box coach, and your host here at Subscription Box Basics, a podcast for new and aspiring subscription box entrepreneurs that want to avoid overwhelm. So grab a coffee, some pen and paper, and let's have some fun. Hey guys, welcome to a live recording of Subscription Box Basics with Julie Ball. That's me. I'm your host, and we are live at Sub Summit 22 in Orlando, Florida. It's beautiful here, and I'm so excited to actually ha- have real people listening. <laughs> so, my guest today is Caroline. She is from MSA. If you haven't heard of that, that's my subscription addiction. And I think you guys are going to love this platform, and we're going to dive in, tell you all the basics of how you can use this to grow your subscription box business. So, Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Yes. Okay. So a lot of people will be meeting you for the first time. So why don't you give them a little bit of background of who you are and a little bit about your career that got you to MSA? Yeah, perfect. It's really sad. My name is Caroline Levere. Um, I've been with MSA for a little bit over a year now. I'm our director of business operations. Prior to joining MSA, um, I've done a few things. Um, primarily was in luxury retail world. I worked at brands like Louis Vuitton, Prada, Tiffany. I also started my own fitness studio. And so what I really loved about MSA, I felt like it was kind of in a weird way, like a combination of two things that I loved. It was, you know, you had that, that retail component that I really liked from my luxury retail days. But for me, that was a little bit too slow paced. I wanted to be somewhere fast paced, a growing company, a startup. Um, and I got that at MSA. So I've been here for a little bit over a year and kind of helping, um, to run the, the day-to-day business. I work on really every part of the organization. Nice. I'm looking forward to hearing all about it, but yeah. let's start with a story because <laughs> I, our, our listeners love a good story. So we're here in Orlando. A lot of people have traveled far and wide to get here. And right before we started recording, you were telling me about your trip. Yeah. You know, the, the cordial thing is like, hey, how was your flight? <laughs> and you're like, uh, miserable. Let me tell you about it. So yeah. Start with that story. Yeah. I'm sure I'm like a very easy traveler. I travel a lot of, you know, really like it takes a lot for me to get annoyed when it comes to travel. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'm a bit jet lagged because I just got back from vacation on Monday. So wake up already super early this morning. I wake up at 4 a.m. for the 7 a.m. flight. Oh, gosh. Um, I board and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm just gonna sit down. I'm gonna work the whole time. Well, partway through the flight, the flight attendant comes by and spills water on my computer. Oh my gosh. I and can't then even imagine. Like, he barely even wanted to get me a napkin to wipe it up and acted like it was my fault that he spilled this water. I was kind of rude about it. And anyways, my computer now has not really been working. I've ordered a, a, the biggest thing that's not working is the keyboard. So I've ordered a oh. keyboard here to the hotel um, <laughs> to be delivered between 3 and 4 p.m. Um, to use for the next few days. Have extra computers, luckily, back in New York. And my CEO um, has been super kind to lend me his computer this morning. Oh, my gosh. um, Whenever I need it for the next few days. What a nightmare. You get on the flight and water (laughs) spills on your laptop and your laptop goes kaput. Like, like, I'm just like in media, like the number keys don't work. And I'm like, oh, that's fine. I'm like, oh, no, you actually need number keys a lot on a keyboard. Even just like type a question mark or an (laughs) accent ball or like an exclamation point. Um, so it's been, uh, and then or else I'll be like in meetings and all of a sudden, like I was in a Zoom meeting and all of a sudden it just like quit and like went into some weird full screen mode with like weird things showing and wouldn't get out of it. And then the mouse disappeared. It sounds like the life of an Anyways. entrepreneur right there. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, you got to listen, problems, problems happen and you got to solve it. That's you know, right. We, we got to be solution oriented. We don't bring problems. We bring solutions. That's right. That's right. Okay. So let's get down to the meat yeah. of the conversation. So a lot of people probably have already heard about MSA, but there's going to be some newbies here. So yeah. what is My Subscription Addiction? Yeah, so My Subscription Addiction is a blog, um, reviews of subscription products. We also have what we call brand pages, which is kind of a page that's on the internet dedicated to your brand that you can own. It's designed to rank on SEO. Um, we have a team that can update and make changes for you, but you can provide as much information as you want. So that way when someone Googles it, they can lo- they can um, see any information about your brand to be able to make a purchase. So MSA was started 10 years ago by a couple named Liz and Eric Cadman. They love subscription boxes. They started writing about brands like Ipsy, Birchbox, FabFitFun. And we've grown since there. We you know publish hundreds of new pieces of content a month, whether it's reviews of brand, of, of, of old boxes, of new boxes, um, coupons, interesting news that's happening. Um, you know, there, if like a brand has raised money, maybe mm-hmm. we've written founder stories and covered that. So we are really like a one-stop shop for people that love subscriptions and just, you know, we have a community that's built up around that and they want to talk about it. We actually had a forum a few years ago that then went away. 
totally forgot. We actually brought it back this year. So it's a place for people that love subscriptions to engage with each other and share what's in their latest boxes that they loved or didn't like. And okay. even just like connect and make friends. Yeah. So the people that are spending their time on the website are buyers, right? Exactly. Yes. You hear people that, that guys? Buy, They're yes. buyers. People that want to buy your boxes. Yeah. Okay. So and there's a handful of platforms like that. What makes MSA different? I think to me, what makes MSA different is the community, honestly, mm -hmm. because we have such a strong community and we've been around for such a long time and we are the biggest and we are the most established and the most trusted. We have brands that are constantly coming to us. Brands are coming to us because they want new customers. Customers are coming to us because they want to find new brands. Discovery, and, right? Exactly. Discovery is a big piece of it. We have, um, we've done surveys in the past of why do people come to MSA? And a big part of it is for that discovery aspect. They want to know what is new and what is exciting in the subscription box world. Mm -hmm. So I know we're just talking and there's no visual, but like, yeah. what does it look like when you go to the MSA website? Do you, yeah. Do you buy like search by category? And yes. That's okay. a great question. So we actually just went through a redesign, I think almost a year ago now. Nice. So when you visit the website, um, the homepage is just a list of articles and different blog posts, whether it's reviews or coupons or news. And you can see also we like in our in our menu bar, you can see we have a bunch of lists and the lists are what people really like as well. Because Ooh. if you want to know what are all of your options for a beauty subscription, you can filter, you go to like best subscriptions for beauty. Okay. And then you can see we have beauty, makeup, clothing, um, food, beverages, everything. So you can search by that. You also can search a specific brand. You can search for reviews. You can search, you can filter for different categories. Yeah. There's really, you know, the site can really be used however you want. There's so many different ways to use it. I would say the most common ways are just by browsing the feed, which is our homepage and mm -hmm. going back like days and days to see the most recent content published, visiting our deals pages, and then visiting the list. Ooh, deals pages. What's that? Yeah. So deals pages where we post all of, um, all, all deals, all coupons. Oh, and we have a special, you know, we have like, I think it's called the unicorn deals, which are like the ones that we're most excited about, Ooh, whether it's yeah. exclusive to MSA, we think it's an extra good deal. Um, okay. It's all on the deals page. So do, from the MSA perspective, you guys are working to find buyers like on our behalf as a box owner, yeah. right? Exactly. So you're doing marketing email lists and stuff yeah. like that email so we, on their behalf? Yeah. So we send emails um, based on, you know, we usually send about one email a week of the best deals. Usually we pick four to five brands to be in it based on what are the exciting deals that we see on that people at brands have like submitted traction, to us. Traction, yeah. Exactly. Like what's getting excitement on our page and what's something that we as a team are excited about. We'll yeah. put in those emails. Um, SEO is another big thing. So that is how we get a lot of traffic is people Googling. So people searching whether they are searching FabFitFun coupon or they're searching best subscription boxes for women or best clothing subscriptions, best food subscriptions, new subscriptions, you know, you name it, all of these search terms we rank very highly for. So that's another way that people are discovering us. Okay. So this sounds like this amazing opportunity for box owners, especially if you're new to like break into the market. Tell us about the opportunity. Like how yeah. can box owners, everyone out here, yep. how can they get involved with MSA? Yeah. So a few different ways. So kind of everything that I've been discussing is what we refer to as our flagship business. That is what MSA has been to get involved there. Um, two things. Number one, if you are interested in having your box listed on our site and being a part of our directory, which as I mentioned, this is kind of that page that's dedicated to you on the internet and you can email our team to make changes. For that, you would email partners at mysubscriptionaddiction.com okay. and we'll send you a link to fill out, to submit, you know, you'll submit this form and then that will get your box listed. Okay. Hold on real quick. Raise yeah. your hand. Who's already listed on MSA? <gasps> Only one Come hand. On. Wow. Oh, I see a second we hand. We have a lot of opportunity here. So, so what's many that email address partner, again? Take yes. note. Partners with an S, um, partners at mysubscriptionaddiction.com. And I'm sorry, it is a very long email. <laughs> and yes, I do get tired writing it. <laughs> Okay. So um, they are going to email that and then yeah. they'll get a response on like, yeah. what are next steps? Exactly. They'll get a response with the next steps. Basically we'll send you a link to a form, um, that you'll fill out to submit a brand page and then we'll get that up and running. Secondly, if you have, you know, if you're interested in a review or you have a deal that you want us to post, you can email posts, P O S T S posts at my subscription addiction.com. So would the first step be getting the brand page? First step though? is getting the brand page. Second page is if you have a brand page or once you have that brand mm -hmm. page, um, that second step, um, emailing posts is if you're interested in a review or, um, you know, sharing any deals and anything new, exciting happening to your box. Okay. So that, those are the ways kind of to work with MSA a little bit more traditionally. That's like, as I mentioned, the flagship. We do have a new business model that we are working on as well. That is, um, it's called social whitelisting. I'm not sure if it's something that, you guys are familiar with, but if anyone is advertising on Facebook and 
you know, hands up if you guys have advertised on Facebook in the last year and you have struggled because of the iOS changes, right? Like mm -hmm. this is not a, con like, I'm sure this is a common thing that a lot of our brands are coming to us about. Yeah. So we had brands that were struggling and they were, you know, we want new ways to grow. We want to make Facebook work. Can we use your content to advertise on Facebook is what they asked us. And so, yes, um, I, in the last six months, we've built an entire business around this where we work with subscription, um, you know, it, it can be subscription brands. It can honestly also be non-subscription brands as well. Any brand out there, we write content for you and we make ad creatives and Ooh. we give you access to our Facebook handle as well as a whole portal of different creators. So you wow. can have multiple voices in the market advertising on your behalf. You actually run the paid ads on Facebook, but this has worked super, super well for brands. They're getting to acquire customers on Facebook for 30, 40, 50% lower CPAs versus their branded ads because of the authority that we have as a third party handle mm -hmm. and it's authentic content. People engage with it more. So when they end up on your site, they convert at a much higher rate. And that's a new offering. And this right? is a new offering. This is something that um, we, you know, last October, November, we're kind of thinking on. December, we started working on it a little bit more. January, we noticed the traction and since January, we've grown from, let's say, like eight brands to close to 70 brands. Because today. it's working. Because it's working, yeah. exactly. And we work with brands of all sizes. We work with some of the biggest names in like the hair care space. Mm -hmm. But we also work with, you know, really small brands that just have very minimal budgets, but they want a way to make Facebook work for them because right. they haven't been able to crack it. And this really is that. To me, this is what provides that scalable growth even more so. While the flagship will provide you growth, this is going to unlock that scale um, and allow you to grow at a much faster rate because of the how effective um, it is on Facebook. That's awesome. I love that. Let's take a step back to yeah. that basic stuff, like yeah. the brand page. Yeah. What does it cost? Like, Yeah. Brand page um, is free. What? Zero dollars. And um, we only we, have one person in yeah. the audience today. Come on, <laughs> <Yeah>. everybody. <laughs> we do ask you guys if you haven't, if you work with an affiliate program, we do put affiliate links in there. Fair. It's it's not required, mm -hmm. um, but it's something that if you have that, it will help us prioritize you guys. If, you know, having that affiliate program is going to help us prioritize you for new content, um, for reviews, for po for posting deals, for including in emails. But the brand page itself, we work with brands that don't have affiliate programs. Um and it's you just, can get the listing for free. Exactly. You got the listing for free. It's just, okay. we believe that every brand should have a presence and have a voice on the internet um, and have that third party presence because we know how valuable having that voice is. And do you have, as the box owner, say I just set yeah. up my listing, do I have access to it where I can adjust it if something yeah. changes? That is a, a great question and something that we <laughs> are are working on. I honestly don't have the timeline of when we will be rolling that sure. out right now. If you join that whitelisting program that I had mentioned, then yes. Yeah. There is a way as a part of that whitelisting that you have a login and you can make changes at any time. Okay. Changing the picture, changing the content. If not, um, you know, you email us basically if you have any changes that you want to make and our team yeah. makes the changes. So it can be. So there's some flexibility yeah, there. Yeah, there definitely is flexibility. The changes definitely can happen. It's not quite as seamless as you just logging in and making a change yourself. Okay. But it definitely can still be done. So I can imagine like reaching out and saying, I'd like to change my main picture yeah. to a seasonal holiday yeah. picture or something exactly. like that. And that wouldn't be a problem. No, not at cool. all. And we like, especially around the holidays, um, we definitely do a lot of outreach to our brands to be prepared. I think last year we had brands pre-submit over 500 deals that we had scheduled. I think starting in October, we asked brands to submit deals for the holiday. Oh, Q4. Um, yeah, um, all, it's already on my mind. Yep. <laughs> um, we had brands submit deals in advance. We had over 500 deals submitted before that were all drafted and scheduled and mm -hmm. ready to go live. And you know, some of those included specific images, changing the images yeah. on the brand page, things like that. Okay. So you work behind the scenes. Do you have yes. any like secrets for us on how to, su <laughs> how to succeed with MSA? Like, yeah, let me, um, secrets. I would say a few things. Number one, like as much information as you can provide on that brand page that up front, up front. Yeah. So that way someone is going to want to, to read that and make a purchase. Think of it as your place on the internet. You know, if you, if someone is going to be reading that and reading about your brand, what are all the important things that you want them to know? Yeah. One sentence isn't going to be enough. Right. Um, so adding more information there, submitting any sales that you have to post at MSA. And then if Facebook is something that you are interested in and interested in working with us, um, for that one, you can email me directly. But for I'd say that that's just another way to definitely succeed. Nice. And my email for that directly is Caroline, C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E, at mysubscriptionaddiction.com. And when we put this Again, on... Again, very long. <laughs> when we put this on the podcast, I'll put all of those email addresses Perfect. in the show notes so that yes. you guys can Amazing. grab them.
This has been so fun. How can people follow MSA, like Instagram, yep. Facebook, whatever? Yep. Definitely follow us on Instagram, Facebook, on both. We are at My Subscription Addiction. Mm -hmm. I think on, honestly, I should know our Twitter <laughs> handle, but I do not That's at the cool. moment. That's okay. Because we changed it. Um, so I apologize. I don't know that. But yes, definitely follow us on Instagram and Facebook at My Subscription Addiction. Sign up for our emails. Um, if you sign up for, through our, you know, you submit a box in the directory, we'll get your email address. We'll put you into a form of email communication that goes out to our partners where we share exciting partner opportunities as well. Oh, what's that? What's partner so opportunities? So partner opportunities are things like sharing, you know, for the holidays that I, the holiday sale that I mentioned, yeah. we email all of our partners ahead of time. So that way they can submit sales. Like media so, partners or influencers or? Um, for partners, that's actually our brands. So we email all of okay. our brand partners. Okay. So we have, you know, a few thousand brands in that database that we email. Um, that's also where we're just sending, we do work with a few other partners that want yeah. it because we have such a valuable audience. You know, we work with, um, whether it's like marketing companies that, mm -hmm. you know, want to offer marketing help to all of our subscription boxes. Yeah. So there are a few one-off emails that we send out to our brand partners as well. Just exciting opportunities for them. Okay. So my last question is a lot of our listeners are new or aspiring. So they yeah. could be in that early stage. Is this something that they would want to do right away? Like get listed right yeah. away? I would say get listed as, you know, as soon as you have that website and you know exactly. Some professional photos. Yeah, and you, you have photos, you have a website, you know exactly what the information is that you want to share and you yeah. want to be out on the web. Get that list, get that live. You can change it at any time. This also allows it to give it, you know, the goal of these pages is to rank on SEO and SEO can take time. It can take a few mm -hmm. weeks for that algorithm to pick up. So the earlier you have it and keep in mind, you can always make changes. You know what you put there the first time is not final. So the goal kind of is like, if someone's searching for like my subscription box is Sparkle Hustle Grow, it's an entrepreneur box. Yeah. So if someone Googles entrepreneur box, you, we want we want the first yeah. listing, so be, yeah. but maybe the second yeah, or the third. Exactly. Is us. <laughs> yeah. So you guys. ideally, if someone if someone Googles Spark Hustle Grow reviews, yeah. um, our brand page would rank. Would come up and like I know okay. that I think that we rank in the one through three spots for a few hundred brands. I used to nice. know that number a little bit more specifically. Well, that sounds like a big opportunity. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely an exciting opportunity. So I'd say get listed as early as you can. And as you grow, you can grow with us. There will always be more opportunities for growth. Love it. That's a great way to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank for you joining so me much. Today this on, was great. Yeah. Subscription Box Basics Live. We Maybe we can hang out for just a little bit. If yeah, anyone has absolutely. questions, you can come chat with us. Thank you for joining us live and thanks always for listening, guys. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.